Well, when your when your livelihood depends on not understanding something, you won't. And and Jamie understands it. He's a very smart person. Uh, but he and other people in the financial services industry are are afraid. Quite honestly, this technology, blockchain technology, will do to financial services what the internet did to media and commerce. Sure, it changes the landscape. You and I can now exchange value without an intermediary. And All for right. 838 years, we've needed intermediaries to exchange value. The banking system, finance system, accounting, auditing, right. all of those things are less valuable uh, in the new world with new technology. All but right. it's inevitable. Yeah, Dominic, I think a little bit of the recent moves, maybe over the last month or so, certainly reflected some enthusiasm about the ETF approval. Uh, which we expect that first week of January, which I, I'll predict January 8th, crown the king on, on the king's birthday. Uh, but I think most of the rise this year has really nothing to do with the ETF at all. Uh, we were very depressed a year ago, uh, really bad bear market following the FTX scandal, and you know, the market's really washed out. Uh, far below fair value. Fair value at the time a year ago is about $32,000, $33,000. Uh, we do a Metcalf's Law and Metcalf, uh, Metcalf value for the network. And that fair value has drifted upwards into the low 50s today. And the price has just climbed relentlessly over the past year to get closer to that fair value. You know, as we head into the new year, we've got the halving uh, in April or May of next year. That's exciting. That'll put additional uh, demand pressure on on Bitcoin. And uh, as we enter, you know, crypto fall next June, things could get very exciting. So we think the market's just getting warmed up here, Dom. Really important question. You know, when you think about, you know, Bitcoin is rallying as people realize that, you know, it's secured its place as digital gold. I mean, it's gone from zero 15 years ago to 850 mil billion, I'm sorry, 850 billion of market cap today, a 20% of the way toward monetary equivalence with gold. Uh, so that's, that seems pretty well established. But the other digital assets, the other cryptos, uh, like Ethereum, Solana, Avalanche, they are more toolkits. They're for developers to build applications. And you know we're just starting. 2024 is the first year of a very long tech cycle. Started back in 1954 with the mainframe. 68 was the microchip. 82 the personal computer. 96 the internet. 2010 the mobile net. And 2024 the truth net, where we basically move away from the trust system and use blockchains for establishing truth. So there's a lot of work to do in terms of developing applications. And most of the value, Dom, has been accruing to the protocol layer. Very different than Web 1 and Web 2. And Web 1 and Web 2, you, you and I can't own TCP IP, which we're using right now to talk. Uh, but you can own Bitcoin, Ethereum, Solana uh, as the underlying protocols that are building the new web. Welcome to the Crypto Teacher. And you know I come back with that video just to make you think. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. And make sure you're joining the Patrons. If you're not a part of the Patrons, make sure you're hitting the cash out. And we have Mark Yusko. Talks about Jamie Dimon. He definitely understands the technology, but he's afraid. Now we know Jamie Dimon is definitely not afraid of this technology. Remember that building Federal Reserve 2.0 on blockchain. We know JP Morgan has their own blockchain and own crypto. And Mark Yusko slips in the new world because that's exactly what we're going to. The fourth industrial revolution where the robots, algorithms, and drones take the economy over, pay each other with crypto, and the sheep go inside the metaverse. And we know the next bull run is going to be a utility run. And unfortunately, the big banks and corporations are going to pick the winners and losers. And we're going to have 99% of these cryptos fall by the wayside. And the same thing goes with the stock market. If your business is not set up for the digital transformation, you will be left behind. And remember the crypto teacher told you. And we have more of the narrative being set up. Now we have the China hackers have infiltrated 
the U.S. infrastructure, says that they could cause societal chaos inside the United States to attack our decision-making around a crisis. And guys, what does the NWO need in order to bring in this fourth industrial revolution? That's right, one more crisis. And we know that's the reason why we're hearing the drums are beating. Don't fall for the distractions. I'm telling you guys, don't fall for the illusions. Stay focused, get in the lab, because you do not want to be caught on the wrong side of history. And it was one thing I wanted to go over back on Black Friday. I wanted to let y'all know my experience and what I saw. And I kept forgetting. But guys, every single store I went into, it was barely any people in there. But guess what the employees were doing? Just boxing items up, putting a shipping label on them so they could ship them out. They're basically using these stores now as small fulfillment centers. If you saw the same thing, please let me know in the comments. But you can clearly see what the plan is going to be. These stores are not getting any traffic. They're going to use them as fulfillment centers and use the drone technology to ship off the goods. And remember the crypto teacher told you, because he knows when it comes to the NWO, it's all planned out. You have a wonderful day. Hackers affiliated with China's People's Liberation Army have infiltrated critical services here in the U.S. Alexandra Hoff joins us now from our nation's capital. Alex, this is not good. No, it's not. I mean, this infiltration appears to be part of a broader effort to insert chaos into our logistical systems. The information collected could then be weaponized if the U.S. and China were to become engaged directly in the Pacific. According to reporting from The Washington Post, citing multiple U.S. and industry security officials, China's cyber army, army is invading critical U.S. services, like an attempt to break into the system behind Texas's independent power grid. Other victims include a water utility in Hawaii, a West Coast port, and at least one oil and gas pipeline according to that report you're seeing there. Brandon Wells, executive director of the Department of Homeland Security Cybersecurity Agency, told the Washington Post this, quote, It is very clear that Chinese attempts to compromise critical infrastructure are in part to pre-position themselves to be able to disrupt or destroy that critical infrastructure in the event of a conflict to either prevent the United States from being able to project power into Asia or to cause societal chaos inside the United States to affect our decision-making around a crisis. The report notes that over the past year, hackers affiliated with the People's Liberation Army in China have accessed the computer systems of about two dozen critical entities. Going to a different economy, and we're going to be learning more about that uh, as we go, but clearly we're, we're, we're learning that things can be done uh, from remote, remote locations. We're learning that technology can replace people even more than we thought. We're not going back to the same economy. We're going, we're recovering, but to a different economy. And it'll be one that is more leveraged to technology. And I worry that that is going to make it even more difficult than it was for, for many workers. In Silicon Valley and my friends who work in technology know that what we did to the manufacturing workers, we are now going to do to the retail workers, the call center workers, the fast food workers, the truck drivers, and then even bookkeepers, accountants, uh, insurance, agents, lawyers, and on and on through the economy. So what happened to the manufacturing workers is a very clear sign. And so we'll import Chinese-based CBDC technology. So it's going to be CBDC in a box uh, provided to you by the People's Bank of China. But every stock, every bond, every currency, every commodity, every piece of art, every private business, every piece of real estate will eventually be a token on a blockchain, an entry on a ledger, permanent and immutable. We will have truth instead of trust, and we will save over $7 trillion a year. Six to 8% of global GDP is wasted by the friction of the trust industry that's necessary when you have dual entry accounting. With triple entry accounting, which is what a blockchain is, mm -hmm. we get rid of all of that friction. It's a beautiful future. Like what you see in China and their social credit scoring systems, right? If we get identity wrong, you know, it could be a tool to enslave humanity. And if we get it right, it could be a tool to liberate humanity. And as an American, you know, uh, uh, I'm obviously rooting for the, the one that's on the side of freedom. Bitcoin is an international asset. And also, I do believe the role of crypto is um, 
it is it, it, it's digitizing gold. I actually believe this technology is going to be very important. I am, I, you know, look at it. We have been part of a huge revolution in investing through ETFs. We believe that ETFs will be changing the whole way we invest. Many people still use it as a means, well, people are investing it for indexing. No, the majority of people who are putting money in an index, in an ETFs are active investors that are buying exposure. The entire bond market is being transformed as we talk right now. I believe the next generation for markets, the next generation for securities will be, will be tokenization of securities. Um, we will, and if we can have that distributed ledger that we know every beneficial owner, every beneficial uh, seller, we all have our, our, our code right. of who's buying, who's selling, instantaneous settlement. And think about it, it changes the whole ecosystem. Chinese bank ICBC has been hit by a ransomware attack, and the U.S. Treasury market, as a result of that, um, has been disrupted. This, according to the Financial Times, we're going to get more right now with Bloomberg's Shanali Bassick. Shanali, what do we know? Uh, listen, we have the Financial Times now reporting that ICBC, one of China's largest banks here, was hit with a ransomware attack. And remember, they're a, a, a very significant intermediary in the Treasury market. The SIFMA has told his members that this has been part of the reason here uh, that the system has kind of clogged up, if you will, during that auction that we saw a little bit before. The attack had prevented ICBC, according to the Financial Times, from settling treasury trades on behalf of other market participants. A large executive at a major bank also telling the paper that such a large party on the fixed income clearing corp uh, creates major concerns, potentially impacting the liquidity of treasury markets. Now it was not just the poor auction. It was absolutely lousy, and, and uh, uh, you know, when, when the dealers have to step in to save a treasury auction, uh, that's a rare occurrence. And Crypto teacher and the new world order book, plus the three kids' books, it's time to re-educate. Also, new to cryptos, Coinbase, Bitchu, Binance. Do not forget book links and crypto links are in the description. The stock channel, guys. Don't forget to go like, subscribe, spread everywhere. You have your Kobo, your chip size, your banking, your gaming, while everybody's sitting at home, get on stocks, the receiver of the biotech stocks, and while everybody's at home wishing, they were still getting that free money. What are they doing? Drinking and smoking weed. Don't forget about those stocks, and you have a wonderful day. The most powerful person in the world is the storyteller. The storyteller sets the vision, values, and agenda of an entire generation to come. Steve Jobs. And guys, you know I truly believe in this. When you look at the New World Order, they're the storytellers. And that's the reason why I wrote my New World Order book. But guys, now it's time to change the current generation. And I wrote three kids' books. You know, I love the Trinity because I understand the power that's in it. So I have three books. We have an opportunity to change the generation, to educate, not just me, but I want to show you that I take action on a daily basis. And I want you to take action on a daily basis, whether it's your job, whether it's in your community. We have an opportunity right now to educate the masses. I posted this on my Twitter account. Please share. But this is a short clip of the three books. There's going to be a clothing line and action figure. Please get these books for your kids, nephews, cousins, friends. So therefore, we can start the re-education now. Because as we see, the fourth industrial revolution foundation is definitely here. Robots, algorithms, drones, taking humanity out the picture. We have to re-educate. But let's get into the video. Part 1, King Yashua and Grandma Tim. Save the village. Part 2, King Yashua and Grandma Tim. Save New York. Long COVID 33, part 3. King Yashua and Grandma Tim goes to China. It's mandatory to get part 1, part 2, and part 3 of this series. It's time to re-educate Generation Z.